Today I will show you how I made the art for my characters in Lost Potato. You'll need a tablet and the drawing software. I personally use Krita which is free and open source. My game is in 640 by 360 but I draw in higher resolution and then I resize it. You could also just make the game in bigger resolution like I'm doing with my other game but then you'll have to work a little bit harder to optimize the texture pages and you'll need to have more details on your sprites so it requires a little bit more skill. Alright, so open up Krita, create a new file and set the width and height to 256. Save the file somewhere. Go to settings, dockers and check the animation and timeline boxes. Then rename the first layer to ink. Click on the first frame of the timeline and select create duplicate frame. After that select the right brush, which is called basic 5 size, and set the color to black. Then we can start drawing our character. I chose a potato because it's very easy to draw and it doesn't have any arms so it will make the animation easier. When you're happy with how it looks, you can select the second frame and create another duplicate frame. So now we have two frames. Activate the onion skins setting by clicking on the little light bulb on the left of the timeline. This will allow us to see the difference between each frame. Right now we're working on the idle animation which will have a total of three frames. We can make it pretty easily by just resizing the character. Then drag the second frame into the third position, create another duplicate frame on the second position and resize the character to be between the two other frames. And now our idle animation is done. We just need to add the color to our character. To do that, add the second layer, put it below the first layer and rename it to color. Then grab the fill tool, set the color to white and just fill the color for each frame. Don't forget to create new frames on the timeline just like for the ink layer. Now we'll do the run animation. So select the fourth frame and delete the frame for both layers. Now we do basically the same thing but for the running animation. You can use a reference online if you don't know how to do it. But you don't have to be very precise since we'll be resizing our image later. Here I'm going to do six frames and I just basically move the legs a little bit every time. At the end you can copy paste your first frame into the last position to make sure the transition looks good. You can use the animation panel to see if your animation looks good. You just have to set the start and end frames and click play. And then you can add the color. When you're happy with it, click on image and scale image to new size. Then set the size to 40 by 40. Then click on file, render animation, set the first and last frame, select a new folder and click OK. Then make sure to hit Ctrl Z until your image goes back to its original size if you don't want to lose the original file and save it. The enemies are done the same way except they don't have an idle animation and they need to have a dead animation which is only one frame. And you can make multiple enemies by just adding a new layer and adding a hat or something. I use the same process for my other game, just with more layers and more details. So now we have a bunch of images in a folder and we need to turn them into a sprite sheet. To do that I use a tool called Texture Packer which has a free version. So open up the app and drag all your images into the left of the application. Set the texture format to PNG8, the algorithm to basic and the trim mode to none. Then click on Publish Sprite Sheet Select the folder and give it a name. Now we are going to import them into GameMaker. So open up a new project, right click on the asset browser and select create and sprite. Rename it, then click on import and select your sprite sheet. Now we are going to convert that sprite sheet back into frames. So click on edit image, then select image, convert to frames, set the right dimensions and the right number of frames and click convert. Now right click on the sprite asset and duplicate it to create the running animation. So now both of our sprites have all of our frames. So we're going to delete the ones we don't need, which are the first three ones for the running animation. We'll also set the sprite to run at 15 frames per second and set the origin to middle center. For our idle animation, we're going to delete the last six frames. Copy and paste the second frame to the last position so the animation loops. Set the frames per second to 9 
and set the origin to middle center. After that, all you have to do is to attach the sprites to an object which has the code logic that controls the movement, and then you're done.